most of America is three days from flaming riots in the streets if the trucks stop rolling. You want to be out there with the rioters getting food? I don't think so. We need to be prepared. We need to have food, water. We have to have some way to protect our assets, like Melanie was talking about. And this is why so many of the people here have the products that, and the services available that you're seeing here. This is stuff that you don't find in your normal uh, conventions or meetings or seminars or what have you. But that's why our next guest here, you need to hear what he has to say. Because if you're stuck with only three days worth of food when the proverbial fecal matter hits the air circulator, you're going to be in a world of hurt. And what are you going to tell your little ones? Mommy or Grandpa or Grandma, I'm hungry. I'm so hungry. And what are you going to do? We need to be prepared. So let's talk to the freeze-dry guy. I, was, I didn't see you over there. I, was, I, I talked to Pastor Butch, and I said, you know, I'm a little concerned about the security in this business. And I guess it was because I was a career soldier for 26 years, and I just, you know, you're very concerned about security. And my family and all, and I, I said, Pastor Butch, I'd kind of like to keep a low profile. And he said, well, you're the freeze-dry guy. And I said, yes, sir. And so he said, well, you're a guy. I thought, well, that's, sir, that works good for me. And then on another program, somebody else, somebody uh, gave the uh, host a kind of a bad time. And for some reason, I became Rick. And some of you probably know me by that. But I'll tell you straight up to my friends out here, I'm, I'm Ron. Beyond that, it's classified. And I like to say, that's a little bit of paranoia, maybe. Uh, in 1970, I was a young paratrooper, and I was very impressed with the long-range patrol rations that we were using. I don't allow pictures. <laughs> that's OK. <laughs> I used to not allow them. But anyway, I uh, was very impressed with the long-range patrol rations we used. These were freeze-dried, very light. We carried 20, about 24 days' worth of them we could. And so I got in the business, and I became the first distributor in the United States for the Mountain House Food Company. Uh, by 1975, I was their company rep for California and Nevada. And in 76, I started doing my own freeze drying, and they promptly fired me, which is fine. It was agreed upon. Uh, they thought at first it would be good for competition, but it didn't work out too well. If we've got a, I guess our history is we've specialized in freeze dried meats, probably sold more of it than anybody in the country that I'm aware of. Uh, freeze dried animal proteins in general, we have entrees, things like that. And in storage, you know, when you're looking to build up a storage, uh, when you're talking to a vendor, asking a few questions, you know, sometimes some things are sold as freeze-dried that are not. In fact, that's very commonly the practice. And for those of you who maybe don't know, basically for long-term storage, the best two items out there are freeze-dried and dehydrated in that order. Uh, the, the standard for freeze-dried foods, military spec freeze-dried food, is the finest in the world, bar none. It's essentially right up there with at least the best fresh frozen or supermarket fresh. It's not organic. Generally speaking, it's not. But if you buy your food at the supermarket, that's the quality of the, the raw product you'll get. But uh, dehydrated foods can be very good, too. They are, they are down the chain a, a bit from the freeze dry, but I sell dehydrated as well, and a very fine product I sold for over 30 years. Um, there's a third line we carry. My, my associate carries the exclusive contract with the U.S. government, and every time they rotate food out of inventory, that's freeze-dried food, they do that about every two to five years. We're the guys who get it. And even those products that were done, generally speaking, about 96 to 2,000, still have a proven shelf life of another 25 years, and that's already been established by long-term uh, testing of the products. Another thing, when you're asking people, when you talk to a vendor, ask them, what is your residual oxygen content? I asked that question of uh, one of my, my fine competitors at a show recently, and he gave me a blank stare. Now, residual means how much is left, and he didn't have a clue. Uh, the, best, the better the job of getting the oxygen out of the container, the longer it's going to last. And some don't do a very good job. Some are down around 80% um, oxygen removal, which is still 20%, which is 10 times more than the the government standard for long-term storage. I know we beat up the government a lot on a lot of issues, but that is one thing they do very well. 
I've used these foods that were in excess of 30 years old, and they were still, they were still testing out very well, they were very palatable, all that sort of thing. Um, again, being a career soldier, and see, this was my night job, uh, paratrooper by day and, you know, food guy at night. That didn't work out too good sometimes when I was gone. But anyway, after I retired a few years ago, I thought I'm going fishing. And I got on the internet and made a mistake getting on there and saw some of these wild people like Pastor Butch and others. By the way, I want to thank him for having me here, you know. This is neat. And I thought, you know, things are more messed up than they were last time I looked. And I'm a dad and a grandpa and everything, so I took it to the Lord. And when I left the Army, I went out kicking and screaming because I was too beat up and old, they said, to do the job anymore. And, uh, and then they were right. Anyway, I talked to the Lord about it, and I said, what do I do to serve? And the answer was basically, there's only one other thing you're qualified to do, so, you know, get to work. And I haven't been fishing since. But this is important. I believe it's extremely important. I liken it exactly to getting on the ark in the days of Noah. I think it's every bit as, as crucial. But anyhow, I would uh, encourage everyone here to get prepared in every way. And we've been hearing all, all aspects of it today, which are good. Uh, spiritual, of course, is most important. But uh, I think we need the temporal as well. And like, uh, like was just said about precious metals, that's another form of buying what you want and a way to protect your wealth. The food, of course, we have to eat. And uh, this has become my mission as long as the Lord wants me doing this. This is what I'm going to do. But uh, look around and like say, whatever you're doing and whoever you're going to do it with, I would do it very quickly. Things are changing. We're, we're running. I'm in good shape. I've got warehouses full yet of my own. But still, we're having shortages pop up um, of the line of government produced items that are rotated. We have two items, peas, uh, compressed peas. Uh, Pastor Butch has made our peas world famous as the hockey puck. Some of you probably heard something about that. By the way, tell you what kind of guy Pastor Butch is. I already had several people I sponsored on the radio, and I called him up one time, it was two and a half years ago as I recall, and we talked for quite a while, and I said, I'd like to sponsor you, I believe. And he said, well, fine, send me some food, because I'm not going to talk about it until I've tried it. And that told me two things about the guy. He's honest, for one thing, and two, when he, once he got it, I knew he'd be hooked, and he was. But I really appreciated that, because some just say, send me money, and I'll talk about your food. But I do look at this as deadly serious. Uh, our lives will depend upon it. When you're buying food, make sure it's, uh, like I say, of good quality. Ask a lot of questions. You, I think you want, perhaps, something that prepares quickly and easily and uses a minimum amount of, uh, of resources, of water and fuel. You'd be shocked, the people all over the country the, who are getting into this, I was called up to Washington State last month and spent time up there. There's a community of people of about 2,200 folks who are seriously into this in a very, very big way. I was shocked. Uh, they look at it a little differently than we do, perhaps, um, more from the earth changes and the scientific point of view, although there were a number of people that professed to be devout Christians up there. But this sort of thing is going on all over the country. People are waking up. So that's kind of nice. We got extra time, perhaps. But again, I encourage everybody, whatever it is that's important to you for preparation, again, do it yesterday. Excuse me. How much time do I have left? Okay. Anyway, with that, I appreciate your time, and it's nice talking to you all.